Jeremy. Um, I co-own uh, Float Wellness Spa in San Antonio with my wife, Courtney. Um, I'm also currently a board member for the FTA and do a little bit of consulting for spas and float centers. Um, I decided to talk about uh, memberships because during COVID, we all faced a lot of challenges and memberships are the thing that helped us um, survive COVID, but also gave us a base point to jump off of. And in 2020, we had our most successful year and we really, really focused on memberships and that was the key to us being incredibly successful this last year. So I didn't want to just stand up here and talk at you guys. I wanted to offer the thing that I felt was most important and could be most impactful uh, for your businesses. So this isn't the end all be all about memberships. Uh, I've got 20 minutes and I feel like I could talk about it for four hours. So I'm gonna breeze through the first few slides to give a, a basis, but um, try and drill down into some bullet points. I'm also gonna be doing a talk with Gloria Morris, uh, a round table with the FTA next month. So if you haven't signed up for your FTA membership, do that and we'll have a much lengthier conversation about memberships there. Um, the first thing is I'd ask y'all to have an open mind about some of these concepts. When I start talking about selling memberships and some of these words, y'all get a little squirmy with some of the, the business stuff. So um, you're not serving anyone. You're not serving your clients. You're not serving your employees if, um, if you're not around to grow and thrive and improve your business. And I think memberships are the best way to do that. Um, the first thing about memberships is you have to start out with an excellent business. If you're not doing what you do well, then it's gonna be really hard to get people back in. So first off, if you're opening a float center, invest in the things that are important. Invest in soundproofing, invest in materials that will last, and um, also invest in good people. If you can find folks that already float, um, my experience is that those are gonna be the best people to represent your business, and then um, if you have the opportunity, add some variety um, into your float center. I love a dedicated float center, but if you can add in um, infrared sauna, massage, other modalities, I think that's a recipe for success. Uh, I talked about that a little bit last year, um, maximizing your revenue generating space, those type of things. And then get feedback from your clients. If you're not seeing growth, then there's something that's not, that's not working talk to your clients, find out what it is that's not, um, that's not working. Um, so the first part of selling a membership is planting seeds early on. So before clients even get into the tank, your intros, there's lots of conversations about that. The only thing I'm gonna say is when you've got new people coming in, get a feel for where they are, um, find out if they're anxious or nervous about their float, and then find out also if they're a Joe Rogan fan and they're like way too amped up about their float, we need to bring them all back into center and say, just enjoy the experience the first time, just take it in for what it is and don't, uh, don't have any expectations about that, what that's gonna be. And remind them that one float is not going to cure what it is you're here for. So if you've spent the last year and a half building up stress and anxiety, we can't necessarily, sometimes we can, we all know that, but we can't necessarily cure you in one float. So remind them before they're at the desk and you're asking them for money, remind them that it's gonna take, for a lot of clients, it's gonna take two or three float sessions before you start to see the longer term or the more impactful benefits. The first float, I tell people, have fun with the first float. It's a cool experience, it's fun, it feels awesome, so just enjoy that. Next, when they get out of their, their float session, I think it's important to check in. Um, we try not to ask people, how was your float? That's asking them to quantify a thing that um, is difficult to do. And so we just check in and we say, how are you feeling? We wanna make sure that they had a good experience, nothing went wrong, they didn't, well, they're gonna get salt in their eyes the first time, that seems a given, but check in with them, see how everything's going, encourage them to hang out and just kind of take in that experience. Um, I think it's a great idea to have a space where people can relax in your center. And I believe that the more time people spend in your space, the more value that it has for them personally. So we've got a lounge, but we also, when we expanded, we had these meditation nooks. It's really cool. I actually saw a client sleep in there for two hours and I loved it because that's what they needed. So I, lo I love that. Um, so again, when I start talking about selling memberships, 
we should probably change our framework with that. It's, it's not really that you're selling it. If you believe in what you're doing, so I think we can all agree that floating can have a huge impact in everyone's life, anybody. Um, if you believe that floating more regularly is going to have a greater impact. The studies have shown that. We know that when people float more often, they get more out of their life, and those benefits last longer outside of the float. And then, if they continue that process regularly, that's gonna have an even greater impact. So don't think of it, and tell your crew, don't think of it as selling a membership. Think of it as you're helping clients uh, save money in the process of floating more regularly. So that's really the key here, is to get away from that mindset. You don't, you don't have to be a sleazy salesperson, you don't have to be pushy, but it's really important that we talk to every single client about membership. So that's the next key. So you, you planted the seed before the float, you checked in with them afterwards. If they feel good about their experience, then you have to ask for the membership, and I think it's a numbers game. You have to ask every single time. That is, if, if you're gonna take away anything from this, that's really the thing, is it's a numbers game. First time floaters, ask them if they want a membership. Someone that's been there 10 times and still hasn't signed up, you still ask them, because it's the best way that you can help your clients. Um, so just to give you an example of what we would say at the front desk, um, I have employees now, so I try and be an example. So basically I ask them, you know, we've already checked in, we know they had a good float experience, and then I say, do you plan on coming back? And if they say yes, they've just agreed that they plan on coming back to your center. The next thing you ask is, well, it would normally be whatever your retail price is. For us, it would be $69 for your 60-minute float today. I can save you a few bucks. We have a membership. There's no contract, and the credits roll over. And I basically try and keep it as simple as that and gauge where they're at with that, how they're feeling. Some people are like, sure. Uh, some folks need a few more details, so sometimes I'll go into some of the other perks. But again, the critical part is asking everyone and um, making sure that you're not missing an opportunity there. Um, if you have a crew, so this is for folks that have employees that are working the front desk, even if it's one person, again, you have to be the example. You have to lead by example by showing that you're talking to all your guests um, about memberships. And we, uh, I, I firmly believe in incentives. If you've got employees and you're asking them to do something um, outside of their regular duties, I think incentives are a great way to do that. And this is where I've heard feedback that folks are really worried about um, their uh, float facilitators being too pushy. We've been doing this for two years. I haven't, I haven't had one client come back and say, hey, that person was being too pushy. They kept asking me about the membership. It's just not in the nature. Like, you, you find people that believe in what you do. And when we launched this program, I had a crew that was amazing, people that were incredibly dedicated in what we do. They believed in our facility. But the day after we started providing incentives, they sold more memberships. That's always going to be the case. This is still a job. People are still there to make money. So I look at it as this is a great way that I can increase their income and I can pay my employees more, but um, it's a win-win situation. Um, you can also incentivize other areas uh, that you want to improve. We also give our employees, our, our front desk folks, uh, they get incentives for five-star reviews. I don't believe in paying clients or incentivizing clients to give us good reviews. I believe in making sure that my crew is asking for that review uh, when we have a client that had a good experience. We don't push too hard on the ones that, um, you know, their earplug fell out or something like that. Um, but <laughs> Uh, so we've also got, let's see here, we're at 4.9 stars with 325 reviews on Google, and it's based on that, on that model. Um, and then lastly, we also create an environment where um, we kind of gamify the idea of uh, promoting memberships. So we also have a contest each month who sells the most memberships. And I know, like I said, this makes some of y'all uncomfortable, but the reality is um, we do a first, second, and third place, and when people are close, and I keep them updated on that, they, they, do, they put in more effort. And again, if you're looking at memberships as a way that you can grow your business, these are some of the tools that, that you can use. Um, so speaking to the, the structure, there's a ton of different ways to structure memberships, and we don't really have time to go through all the different ways. Um, some things to consider, though, is you wanna bring value 
and flexibility. I think flexibility um, really helps take away that nervousness that clients have when you say membership. I'm a firm believer that you shouldn't have contracts. Um, worry less about the way people can take advantage and worry more about how you can bring people in to float more often. And so adding flexibility and different ways that people, different perks that people can use to um, use those credits is a good way to keep people on. So when we look at pricing structure and perks, I think of pricing as the way that you um, increase your sales. So I think that there needs to be a big enough differential. So um, if you're talking about your retail price to your membership price, you need to make that gap big enough that it's gonna motivate people to sign up for a membership. Um, but you also wanna make sure that that's a win-win. If you're pricing it too low where your center is not profiting, that's obviously not good, um, but you need to have a big enough incentive there for um, clients to be motivated to sign up for the membership. And then the perks, the things that you decide to offer with that is what retains members. So in other words, um, the number one reason that people um, get rid of their membership is because they have too many credits. Um, we've been polling our members for a long time and I've talked to other float centers. This is pretty much universally true. They're like, we've got, I've got six credits stored up. Um, I wanna cancel my membership. So get really creative with the ways that they can use those member credits. For us, um, some examples of that is uh, the credits roll over for up to six months. Um, we recently put a time limit on that. Uh, we used to say universally, and that was catching up to us. So we grandfathered in the folks that had had the old style of membership and the new ones. We're putting uh, six months while you have your membership, three months after you cancel. Nobody's complained. We didn't slow down. So this is really important from a bookkeeping standpoint, but also just preventing that those credits from stacking up and nobody really complained about the idea that, okay, well, I've got six credits, so they're gonna start to roll off. It's more of a motivation for them to get in and use it. And I want people to use our member credits. You're definitely gonna have people that won't use all of those credits. And in some ways, that's good for business, I guess you'd say. I think it's better if we have people coming in and floating and using those credits and enjoying that experience. Um, I really push anytime we have a holiday or a season where people are giving gifts, I really encourage clients to switch a, uh, a member credit over to a gift card. So Christmas, we send out a, a special email just to our members saying, hey, let's swap, those, uh, let's swap those member credits into gift cards. And now they're bringing in clients for you. So that's a huge opportunity. We do a ton of those around Christmas, but we also do promotions for Mother's Day, Father's Day. And just in general, if we're checking out a client, we notice they have a lot of credits, we're like, hey, is there anyone you would like to give a gift to for a birthday or just, um, we've even had people donate floats. So there's a lot of different ways where you can help them use those credits so they're just not sitting there and making them feel like they're wasting their money. Um, we allow guests to share memberships. Sometimes we have couples that just do one membership and they share it back and forth. I don't really mind that. We allow guests to buy additional floats uh, with their, uh, at the membership price. So that's an opportunity where it's a perk. It, we, maybe we could sell an extra membership, but it's a way that we can bring more people on and keep them longer. Going back to structure, again, there's a, a ton of different ways you can set up your memberships. I'm a fan of having one float per month and then you can buy additional floats at that same price. I've seen some models where you can have two or four floats a month. If that's working for you, keep doing it. Whatever you're doing, if, you're, if you feel like you're successful, continue that. In my mind, when you sign up someone for four floats a month, their intention in the beginning is that they're gonna float once a week. It's very rare that people maintain that, and so very quickly, they're gonna have a lot of credits build up and they're gonna, feel, they're gonna lose that value, so they're gonna drop off. I'm more focused on how do we keep people and continue to build memberships, because your attrition is just as important as your sales. And so I look every month at how many memberships did we lose. You're always gonna have folks dropping off, but if you can reduce that rate of attrition, it's just as important as selling new memberships. So I like the one a month, they can buy extra credit. So if they do end up coming four times in a month, then they get that same price, but it can help reduce that attrition. Um, so um, a few of the goals and final bullet points Make sure that your membership is mutually beneficial. 
again, if this is a way to create a stronger bond between you and the client, uh, but it has to make sense for your bottom line, so you need to really understand your financials, what is, it, what is your cost per float, what are your monthly expenses, and make sure that it makes sense for the business, but also you have to have that pricing right where people are gonna be motivated enough to, um, to, to sign up for the membership. And some of, some of the other ways that you can frame memberships is you're bringing in clients that understand how everything operates. We've got members that come in, they're like, give me my earplugs, they go back to their room, they jump in, they know exactly what to do, and if they're all business, they come and go, and we hardly have to, you know, they don't even need to check out before they leave because they know have a, they have a credit. That is really efficient compared to first timers. We spend a lot of time with them, sometimes five, 10, 15 minutes, uh, making sure that they're comfortable going through that process, working with them afterwards. We've got some members that hang out longer, but in general, it's much more efficient to have clients coming in more frequently than a constant stream of new clients. Um, I looked at some of our stats recently, 75% of the people that came into our center last month were return clients. Um, so, oh, thanks. <laughs> so, um, I've heard figures in the 10% range, and that's really expensive way to do business. It is not sustainable. If you can't get that return client ratio up, then it's gonna be really hard, it's gonna be really difficult to maintain your business. It's expensive for marketing. We've spent a lot of money and lately we've been pushing, we've been lowering that amount more and more because a higher percentage of our revenue is coming from memberships and we just don't have to bring in new clients nearly as much. Um, every once in a while I'll look at the schedule and um, almost the entire day is full of members. I'm like, well, I don't know if we even need anyone here. They know what to do. Um, I'm just kidding. Um, let's see here. Long time, uh, long term clients see greater benefit. As we spoke to earlier, if they're coming in more often, they're floating frequency, frequently. Um, I still have a member that was one of our very first clients, so he's had a membership for five years. It's part of their lifestyle. They're not going anywhere. It doesn't matter who shows up in town. Nobody's taken by members. Like, they're part of our family. And um, COVID's been very difficult because there's people that we're just seeing back in that we haven't seen in a year, and it's like a reunion. So building that bond uh, between you and the client where uh, they become family is always a, a great business model. Um, and again, increasing efficiency and not maximizing revenue uh, per transaction. This isn't about how much money you can get per transaction. Again, uh, check out my talk from last year and I talk about maximizing revenue in your space. You can use retail, you can use other services. There's a lot of ways where you can increase that ticket price per client. This is about efficiency. This isn't about maximizing the amount of money that you can bring in um, per sale. And then don't focus too much about people gaming the system. I like the idea of starting out really flex flexible, bringing people in, and then if you see ways that people are kind of taking advantage, you can always rein those in. We've increased price, we've, um, like I said, we've shortened the time frame they can use credits, we've done other things and, and kind of honed that, but start out flexible so that you can retain members and, and kind of go from there. Um, again, I'll be speaking uh, on a round table with the FTA. Please sign up for the FTA. I think that they are doing amazing things and um, as a member, you can go back and see some of the round table events that we've done. Uh, we bring in leaders from the industry to talk about the important things that can help uh, grow your business. So next month, we're gonna spend a lot more time on this. Uh, I promised somebody that I would talk for four hours about memberships. So if I have to talk for four hours about memberships, I will. This is a huge topic and there's a lot of different ways that you can structure things and we can look at individual cases, but um, the main thing to take away is um, it's a really important way to, to build your business. We're at 634 members. I checked while I was sitting in there. And uh, that was after when we reopened, we were shut down for two months after COVID. We reopened and we still had 200 members. So these are folks that knew we were closed for two months and I literally got emails saying, I'm supporting your business. I know I can't come in and use it. Uh, so for times like that, it was really critical helping us get through, but that was our, our jumping off point and we've grown to that number since then. I also have some really, really amazing team members. Um, 
our manager, Kendall, will sell 40 memberships in a month. I never came close to that, so I can't take all of the credit for our success. Um, but we've got other team members that they train and everybody pitches in. So there's months where we sell over 100 memberships and it's just continuing to grow. This last year has been a really big eye opener. So I wanted to encourage y'all with that. I'm an open book. If, if anyone needs anything, feel free to send me an email. Um, my email is there. Hit us up on social. I probably won't respond as close as quickly there, but um, I'm happy to help any way I can and speak to other, um, other folks in the industry when you need help. Before we opened and still while I've been here, every single talk that I've uh, been to, I've, I've taken away a gem of knowledge. So nobody in this room is above uh, learning uh, from anyone else. There's always something you can take away. So let's continue to grow together. Let's build this industry. I think there's another wave of floating coming. Uh, COVID is gonna, it's either gonna stick around or it'll be behind us. It doesn't really matter. People are really focused on their wellness and taking care of their health themselves. That's what we're seeing a lot of conversations about. And this is the absolute best tool to do that. So thank you all so much. I love you guys. And I'm here if you need me. Thank you.